All right, you guys, we're finally live again. This seems to be some kind of attack we're under. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but every time the show that we have set to go live, we end up getting it set to private. So um, here we are. We're just going to do this on live stream, apparently. And hopefully this is coming through because of the technical difficulties. I'm going to wait and just make sure that we're connected, make sure we're live before I continue on with this. Now, things are moving fast and furious. We are at the point now where a third of the military, a third of the military is now under threat of mandatory stickers. And court martial. Now I'm going to cover this headline and maybe a few others that are very important because I feel the rope beginning to tighten here on YouTube and we need to get this information out. This is real. Remember back at the beginning of the sticker rollout when basically a third of the military had, was already refusing the sticker. Well now... It will become mandatory within the next 30 days. And they are talking in here about court martial and other threats. Now, what are these people going to do? They could be dishonorably discharged. All of it's in this political article. I'm not going to bore you with the details. But this is what's going on. This is huge. Why is this huge? Because it would be one thing if they just let you quit, right? But to have your pension taken away, have your pay docked, have all of these things done to you with such a large block of people refusing the sticker, this is huge. There will be pushback. Now, will the media cover the pushback? I don't believe so. So this is probably one of the most important headlines for today. And I want to also cover this one because women were shamed. Their posts were removed from social media just after the sticker rollout in December of 2020. They were, t they were called names. They were called sticker hesitant or anti-sticker because of the things they were reporting happened to them. And these things were removed from social media as misinformation. And this dovetails right in with how women have always been treated when it comes to the health industry. They are excluded from clinical trials. This is mainstream news, you guys. And I have my reasons as to why I think that is. But, of course... They're not going to tell you that part of it. So what's going on with this? Well, the C to the D to the C is finally admitting that women's periods have ch are, can change. I have to be careful with my words here. They have now acknowledged that this is an effect, a possible effect, potential effect. I'm just reading from the court's mainstream article. That is being reported consistently. They're finally acknowledging. But what about all the women who were shamed and their posts removed? And told to go away. And it's all in your head. And you're just an anti-sticker person. Well, now the truth comes out. They couldn't run from this. They never could. They tried to hide it. And now here we are. A broad range of changes in their periods. In some cases, they were earlier, heavier, more painful. Than that. And this is why women are concerned. Because anytime you get a change in your cycle... That's linked into other parts of your body and other functions of your body. This was where the concern came from. This is maybe one of the biggest cover-ups of 2021 and 2020. And now the C to the D to the C are finally acknowledging it, but they still won't list it in the potential effects. Go figure. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details of this, but I will put a link to this as well now let's make sure we're still up and running appears as though we are and for those of you that are just finding the channel apologies we tried to get this up in the form of this 
video here. Luckily, I have the MP4 file. We can just play it here. There's nothing in this video. All we do is read through headlines. And for some reason, YouTube kept putting it on private. So I don't know what's going on with my channel. We may have been hacked. I haven't seen any suspicious activity, but something is definitely going on. So as you guys um, filter in here, let's make sure you guys are with me. There, has anyone have any? Is anyone having any problems getting into the show? Let's read some of this here. Now, we were the first ones to report on these changing cycles, and of course, at great risk to the channel. But we knew something was going on very early on. We didn't let it go. We tried to be careful how we covered it. But now they're finally acknowledging it. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to filter in before we play what YouTube would not let us play. It was, it, they kept marking it private. It was weird. I would go in to the back end of my channel. I would try, I would have it all set. I would move the time back. And then just before it would go live, just before it would premiere, it would go private again. It was like somebody was in my account, which was very bizarre. So we'll let about half of you get in here before we play what they didn't want you to see. Welcome, everybody. Thanks. As in the days of Noah, Pie Lover, Co Coates, Amy, Tom. I don't know what triggered it. Maybe it was something... In the comment section, maybe it was something in the chat. I have no idea. Never had this happen before me, to me ever before. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and play this for you guys. Here we go. Hey guys, enter the stars and welcome to reading between the headlines. Now, I was going to wait to do this show. But I am pre-recording this so I can hang out with you guys in the chat. But I decided to get on here because... The headlines are starting to pile up. A lot going on over the last week since we did reading between the headlines last. The biggest news, I believe, is probably Cuomo resigning finally after this probe that finds that he had done some bad things to women. Eleven of them to be exact. Now, if it wasn't the first accusation... It should have been the second, and by the time we got to five or six that had come forward, you would think that it would be a slam dunk that he would have resigned a long time ago. But unfortunately, we live in a reality where there are no consequences for the rich and powerful. Now, I'm going to interrupt myself there. That's weird, huh? And let you know that there's something really weird going on. The media seems to be imploding. First, Bo Jivin tells... Cuomo to resign and then he comes out and says that he did a great job and he was so sad that he resigned now did he forget that he asked him to resign I mean this is crazy you guys things are going off the rails I pulled up my Yahoo stories and guess what was trending Patriot supplies was trending Something is going on. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's linked into the military, but something is in the air with what is coming. All I can say is pray and stand strong and do not give in to your beliefs. Many of you know who are on our own level of this existence that even one claim means immediate termination. In, in our positions that we hold on our level. But for these people, we've seen this time and time again. On the right and the left, almost every single president has gone through this. Where they've had women come forward and make these claims. And yet they still move on to become presidents, win elections, and stay in power. So let's get caught up on what's going on with Cuomo. It says here, New York Governor... Andrew Cuomo resigned office Tuesday, one week after an investigation concluded that he had done what they said he did. Now, look, I agree they should investigate these kinds of things. Absolutely. Because, you know, you never know who could step forward and accuse you of doing anything. But these people that are surround, that surround these cases, they know what's up. And 
also the people that are perpetrating these things, they know what's up too. And then they know if there's a good likelihood that what the other people are saying is true. And they know when they're busted. So he should have stepped down a long time ago. Anyway, he announced in a press conference Tuesday that he would step down from his office. His resignation will be effective in 14 days. The best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. Therefore, that's what I'll do because I work for you. And doing the right thing is doing the right thing for you. Yeah, right. Decision to resign spared Cuomo, who has been governor since 2011, and his son of former New York Governor Mario Cuomo, a potentially lengthy impeachment trial in the New York Assembly that was likely to have ousted him from power. What about the criminal charges here? What is this guy going to settle? I mean, if I were one of these women, I would want to go to court and expose all this and have this guy go to jail for what he did. It's not enough to just get paid off anymore. Okay. So this is the story on Cuomo. Let's get into this next story. The White House considers withholding federal funds to drive stickers. Now, we all saw this coming. Let's see exactly what they're talking about here. It says, the Bo Jivin administration discussed the possibility of withholding federal funding largely for long-term care facilities. So this would be like the nursing homes. Now, what good does it do to withhold funding from a nursing home? All that's going to do is end up in more death, regardless of whether or not somebody's stickered. Now, we'll get into another story later in which uh, the Florida governor is going is talking about withholding salaries from some of these school administrators who are trying to go around him and require masks for children. We'll get into that story later. But this seems like the same type of thing. Getting into cutting funds off for people. Now, this means jobs. It means the safety of the people living in these long-term care facilities. Many of them might even have to shut down if they don't get the funding that they're accustomed to getting. Here's the next story. California healthcare workers must be stickered by the end of September under the new health order. So California taking it a step further and implementing mandatory stickers for California health workers. It's the first requirement of its kind in the nation. They ordered Thursday that healthcare workers be fully stickered. The new mandate applies to employees in hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, doctor's offices. So do you see the push here toward the senior or elderly population? That raises a red flag for me. What do we have here? Unemployment. Workers in more states sue governors over early end to benefits. Now, they're trying to blame the reason why they can't find labor to fill some of these positions. They're trying to blame that on People continuing to get unemployment benefits. But I think there's a deeper story here. And that is, is that all these requirements people are being mandated to, to, to do, like have the sticker or wear a mask all day. And some people simply don't want to do it. But here's the map here. This is, these are all the states that are getting rid of their jobless benefits. This is going to force a lot of people back to work as their unemployment dries up. Let's take a look at this map here. They also are showing on this map uh, the states where there's a return to work bonus. In other words, they're giving even more money to have you go back to work. That would be states like New Mexico has a return to work bonus Colorado Montana Oklahoma Connecticut and New Hampshire but all these red states are canceling the federal fund funding programs and I believe that the all these programs were put in place all this money that they've been throwing out was an incentive for you to play ball in other words get the sticker it was all part of this big package and they were hoping you'd get swept up in all this love that they were handing out. 
so that you would just go get your sticker and be a good little citizen. After all, we're giving you a bunch of unemployment benefits. And now they're threatening to cut all of this off. So, what is it going to look like in six months or a year when all these benefits dry up? Will people go back to work? I don't know. That's a good question. A lot of people aren't going to have a choice. We've talked about the problem with labor in America that most of these corporations do not offer full-time jobs. They dangle this carrot in front of you, tell you, oh, if you're just here long enough, work here for five years, then we'll give you full-time. Meanwhile, they basically suck up all of your most productive years. You're old and tired and angry. There should be the opportunity for people to have full-time employment. Now, some people don't agree with that. They believe that it goes against freedom and the free market. But since when have we had a free market? If we're going to have a free market, let's have a free market. But you can't skew the, the table against the laborers in favor of the companies. You can't do that because we're going to lose every time. So they just pick off people one by one. Give them five, ten hours a week at this job, five, ten hours a week at that job. They're running back and forth, scrambling for jobs at the mercy of the employer. What else do we have here? Well, Pasaki dismisses school masking mandate concerns. Says that her daughter can wear a mask all day. Well, good for you. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, what grade are we in? I can jump higher than you. I mean, seriously? Jen Pasaki on Friday dismissed concerns over the new guidance for teachers and staff and students to wear masks indoors, regardless of the sticker status, arguing that her kindergarten age daughter has said she can wear a mask all day. Well, you're just a high achiever. You know, I had a friend once. Every time I talked to him, we'd catch up over the years. He would brag about how many languages all of his kids spoke and such and such. I'm like... Uh, that's kind of cringy, dude. But this is what the White House press secretary is using to try to convince all of us that, you know, if our kids were just high achievers like her, they could wear a mask all day, too. What else do we have here? Massive Delta surge hasn't convinced unstickered Americans that the virus is riskier than the stickers. So they're opening this up for debate here. Basically acknowledging now that people do feel that the stickers are dangerous. They hadn't really done that before. But now they're doing this in this uh, particular article. As the Delta Air variant rips through the under stickered parts of the U.S. And shatters hospital records in hotspots such as Florida and Louisiana. More unstickered Americans continue to say that the CV-19 stickers pose a greater risk of health than the virus. Now, here's the problem with this. Is that they're downplaying these risks in the media. And that has everybody concerned. The data, the, the reporting system has been downplayed. It's gone. It's actually been taken down a few times. Things have been changed. They're not acknowledging these things until after a bunch of people get sick. At first, they say there's no connection. People are trying to share their stories on social media, and they're constantly getting fact-checked until the mainstream media decides that they want to acknowledge there's a connection. And then all of a sudden, it's all good. This is what people are upset about, is that they're not being clear with us, and they're calling us liars until they decide what the truth is. So, here's the latest on what's going on with that. What's this? We're not going to lock down our economy, the White House says. Oh, really? You're not going to shut us all down again? Well, do they even have the right to do that? No, they didn't the first time and they don't again. So, I don't know what this is about. The White House used Friday's news of nearly a million jobs gained throughout July to argue that notions of a potential spamdemic backslide are greatly exaggerated. 
This is not March 2020. Yes, it's not March 2020. So why are they trying to force stickers on everybody? Addressing fears at the Delta-driven surge of the CV-90 cases, now gripping the nation would see the return of crippling restrictions. Or even January 2021. We're not going to lock down our economy or our schools because our country is in a much stronger place than when we took office. Oh, so they're saying, oh, because of the way the left is handling it, we're in a much better position. This is hogwash. This is more right-left paradigm deflection and grandstanding. All right. This is next story here. Airlines are not going to have sticker mandates. Here's why. Now, this is on the heels of an announcement that was just made by United Airlines saying that they're going to make their workers get the sticker. Now, this is interesting because they're going to make their workers get it, but not the people that fly. Let me see if I can find that story. Well, I guess I don't have it pulled up. But that's what's going on. I just got some emails from United Airlines saying that they are making all of their workers get it. And I wanted to like reply to that email and let them know shame on them. But of course, there's no way to talk to these people. Let's read this story. We've been living in a spam pandemic for over a year and a half. And in that time, we've learned a lot about the CV-19 and its variants. And while misinfo and lies are still pervasive, there's plenty of facts. Scientists and infectious disease experts know to be true. Okay. So, of course, they're going to push their agenda here. They're talking about the second wave. And now... The big question, will airlines be next? The airline industry, which received $25 billion in federal bail on 2020, has not yet required travelers to prove they've been inoculated before boarding a flight. Currently, 2 million people are flying every single day, leaving many to wonder if airline companies will join the fold and start mandating stickers prior to booking a flight. United Airlines announced that it would require all employees to be stickered by October 15th, more than five days of the F to the D to the A fully approving the sticker, whichever comes first. We have no greater responsibility to you and your colleagues and to ensure safety when you're at work and the facts are crystal clear. Everyone is safer when everyone is stickered. So it doesn't look like they're going to start to push this. We did get the passports, but in the form of events like bars and concerts and things like that. And so far, and also also um, international travel, of course, but so far, it hasn't touched the domestic flights yet. Will this change? I'm not sure. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. So this is the update on the airlines and their sticker mandates. A growing number of multi-stickers are getting unauthorized booster shots. Now, this is kind of funny because this is tantamount to basically an addict, which isn't really funny, but they're basically have this version of people that are so in fear that they're actually getting extra stickers. <laughs> I, I mean, you can't make this up. Look at this lady. She's like, I'm going to get all the stickers I can get. Now, they put stories out there like this. To basically subliminally make you feel as though these things are so safe that even the crazy ones in our society who want to be a little extra safe, they can go above and beyond. And look, they're still alive. Do you see the subliminal agenda behind stories like this? Katie Bent. Oh, she got bent for sure, right? And her three roommates all got JJ, Good Times Walker, Sticker. In April, at the Oakland Coliseum in California, the first one offered to them after a year of relative isolation. If the Pfizer had been the first option available to me, I would have gone with that over the JJ Good Times. Bent, a 30-year-old tech worker, told Insider, 
My priority was getting it sooner rather than getting the preferred option. So, of course, there's all this programming in here. And she figured she would eliminate the feeling of panic when someone came too close to her in the grocery store. Huh. Earlier this summer, she saw research suggesting that the Delta rendered them less effective, slightly less effective. And she began to doubt the protection that she had. Of course, you're going to doubt the protection that you have. Because it's a form of a false sense of security. Look at all the promises that were made. Now all of a sudden there's breakthroughs, right? Not to mention the psychological aspect to this. All the fear that even caused you to go out and put something in your in your arm that came to market so quickly. That would translate then into still not being satisfied with the level of protection you were promised. It only makes sense and I'm not even a psychologist and I know stuff like this. So she went out and got extra booster shots, which to me is just hilarious. And of course, I do feel a bit like an experiment. She's laughing it up as if she's completely okay with any possible long-term effects that nobody knows about yet. Until it happens to you, right? Until it happens to you. Next story. New Texas School CV-19 Guidelines Rattle Medical Experts. Now, this is a positive story because the Texas Education Agency is giving some very loose guidelines for children to come back to school. Schools don't have to inform parents of positive cases, do not have to contact trace, and parents can choose to send a student to school if he or she has been in close contact with a positive case, among other updates. Now, of course, they're pulling the worst of these out. There's probably most of the updates make perfect sense. These I still agree with, but they're pu they're pulling out the ones that could go either way. They must exclude students from attending school in person who are actively sick with CV-19 or have received a positive test result. Now, this just goes without saying, right? Most parents know that you don't send your child to school with a fever. So there's nothing new here. So they're pretty much going with the regular old rule. If you've got a fever, don't send your child to school. If your child has a fever, usually the parent will be called and you have to come pick your child up. They take the child away from the rest of the students. And this is just business as usual, which is kind of the way it should be. So good job, Texas. And we're in for the Lambda variant. And they're saying here as of August 7th that the Lambda is officially in the U.S. We'll see what they have to say about it. I haven't read too much on the Lambda. We did see it an appearance of the name Lambda or Lamb in the Travelers science fiction TV series about a spamdemic. So that was kind of weird to hear them voice that. But let's read about this. A new CV mutation known as the Lambda is thought to have increased resistance to stickers has appeared in the U.S. And that's what makes this variant different. To date, they have not conceded that these variants were any less effective against the stickers. But now they're finally admitting that. And of course, all this could be hogwash, but I'm just telling you what they're telling us as we read between the headlines. Also known as C37, the variant was first discovered in Peru in 2020. Peru has been one of the countries hit hardest by the spamdemic. So, Lambda has since spread to eight countries. There are currently more than 1,300 Lambda sequences in 44 states. Of course, 44, right? Researchers in Japan have found that the Lambda contains three mutations on its spike protein that makes it more infectious than the original. Two other mutations on the spike proteins make it about 150% more resistant to antibodies produced by the sticker. Variant of interest, meaning that it is suspected to be either more contagious than the original or more able to evade stickers. Now, what does all that mean? That's a big 
word sandwich for, oh, we just need to come out with another sticker and make more money. Now, this one's funny because NASA wants you to come back to the movie set as you pretend to be on Mars. Now, my guess is they're probably going to use this as some kind of uh, test run to see how convincing they can be. But basically, they're asking for volunteers to spend an entire year living in a 3D printed Martian habitat in Texas, where they will carry out spacewalks and research using virtual reality technology. Yeah, how are we going to practice? This is their, what do they call it? Uh, their trial run. What do they call it when people do like a practice run in movies? I wish I knew what that was. Anyway, they want, now there are going to be people that are going to run to the front of the line to go be part of this. Looking for volunteers to live on a fake Martian surface for an entire year. I would go out of my mind. It'll take place in the Johnson Space Center in Texas. A lot of weird space stuff going on in Texas, isn't there? Applicants must be aged 30, 35 with good physical health. And stickered. No, it doesn't say and stickered. Looking for applicants to spend a whole year pretending they live on Mars. 1700 square foot Martian surface is located inside the Space Center in Texas. Oh, they've they've already got a movie set for this. 1700 square foot. It's not very big. These types of simulations are called analog missions. Well, I'm sure they are. So, this is what's going on with their science program with regards to Mars. They're now doing mock-up fake missions. Wow. What else do we have here as we start to get down to the end of our updates here? In western New York, the far right tries to make inroads with skeptics. What? Says the leader of the far right group. In New York, stood on top of a truck trailer, speaking to a crowd of about 100 people in a quiet suburb of Buffalo. They had gathered in June to support a Buffalo Bills player who had refused to take the sticker, even at the cost of his career. You guys, they're firing people for not sticking something in their arm. So, of course, this is a roasting, roasting the right. They love to do this. They want to put all the blame on the right. They want people to believe they're only they're only doing this because there is a democratic president in office. This is what they're telling people. And it makes the people on the left hate the people on the right even more. And the people on the right hate the people on the left even more. So here they go. They want to depict these far right groups as dangerous, uninformed, and spreading misinformation. And something that needs to be dealt with. How are they going to deal with people in this group? Remains to be seen. But we see already how they're roasting the right in the media. So that's how they're depicting this story as dangerous recruiters. Of people that otherwise would be safe as long as they listen to the mainstream. Now, this is funny because we've been following this Jennifer Aniston story. And experts say the plea, these celebrity endorsements don't work. Why well, could have told you that? People like to watch these people on TV and in roles and in acting. But then there's a line that's drawn. You don't want to listen to these people's political beliefs or what they tell you to do. Unless it's something like makeup or working out or something like that some people will listen to them for that just because they like to keep watching these people on tv and so that's why they'll do it not because they think these people are so smart so now the, the quote-unquote experts are acknowledging that this simply doesn't work great they probably got she probably got roasted on social media she was telling people, I'm not going to be your friend if you don't get the sticker. 
Now, here's another story that on its face appears to be a, a story that is sympathetic to the cause of freedom. But they turn it around, of course. Mandatory stickers that triggered a, a riot in Montreal in 1885. This was a smallpox. And there were 2,000 violent rioters. Oh, were they uh, B to the L to the M? Oh, no. Sorry. Notice the double standard. Some armed with stones, others with revolvers, stormed through the streets, protesting mandatory stickers. Kill the sticker naders, they shouted. The scene was Montreal on the night of September 28, 1885, after the city moved to impose compulsory stickers to fight the smallpox. Protesters were residents of the French-Canadian neighborhood of Montreal, where distrust of the English majority government ran deep. On Monday, the pentagram announced that all active duty service members must get stickered against the CV-19. I hope a third or half of the military drops out before this happens. That would send a statement, finally. And if you're faced with this, uh, this decision or this choice, I hope you make the right one. So, they basically depict these people as irresponsible in this riot, uninformed, and just dumb. That's how they're depicting these people. And that's how they want to depict anyone in modern times who resists stickers. Now, I'll put links to all these stories in the pinned comment. For after this show, here's another story. Won't get a sticker. Uh, sticker. Come, uh, some bosses may charge you $20 to $50 more for health insurance on every paycheck. So now they're going to raise your insurance rates. Tyson Foods, United Airlines, CNN, the U.S. military, a wide variety of employers, such as those four, are imposing sticker mandates on their workers. And experts believe... They'll have a lot more company soon after the F to the D to the A gives the stickers full approval. And I anticipate this too. Once this thing gets approval, they're going to put the pedal to the metal. And it's going to be very difficult for anybody who has to go grocery shopping or go to work or commute in a public, you know, public um, commute publicly to do so without these stickers. Some empl employers aren't ready to impose mandates, but may still penalize workers for not getting stickered. Notice how they're just talking about what could happen. These are all just threats. I don't think anyone's done it yet, raised your insurance premiums, but they're putting the word out there. So, this is our future. As we know, when the media starts talking about something, then it becomes true. Now, here's some images of... The Lambda symbol, Lambda variant. This reminds me of like a pyramid or an apex, upside down V. But this is the Lambda symbol. The Greek letter. I wanted to show you guys that. Doctors say the unstickered households driving spike in kids. So now they want to scare you. Your kids could get it. Now, I've got family members that won't let their children play with other people that aren't stickered. This is unbelievable. Wasn't it Bo Jivin that told the little girl in the press conference that she had nothing to worry about? Notice how the information keeps changing based on how they're going to manipulate us. Well, now they're saying these poor children are dying because of irresponsible, unstickered people. Now, some pilots are standing up at, at United Airlines saying not so fast on the mandate. This was August 6th, a couple days ago. And they're talking about union negotiations, employer mandate stickers are an issue that must be bargained, the Airline Pilots Association said in a statement to Barron's. Now, we'll see how all that shakes out, but as it sits... 
United is saying that they're going to sticker all their employees. Now, Bo Jivin's in big trouble. The Blind Eleven families told him to stay home. Don't come to our memorial. Why? Because he, like past presidents who promised to do something about Blind Eleven, won't release these hidden documents. Now, I don't suspect that these hidden documents are going to hold anything of any truth that will help people to wake up to exactly what happened. But this is just one more example. And in fact, this article seems to dodge the real issues with Blind 11. And they say that the families want to expose the connection to the Saudi government. Like that's going to change anything about what happened. It's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. And everybody knows it. But they don't mention any of those theories in this article. Only that the Saudi government had more to do with it than they're admitting to. So, once again, none of these articles can you leave your comments. So we have to read between the headlines on shows like this. And here's his last story. The Florida government governor says if school officials impose mandates, then he'll withhold their salaries. Now, a lot of you are skeptical about the governor of Florida, and I am too. I don't trust any of these people. This could just be the controlled opposition. This could just be, what do they call that? The dog and pony show, where one side is grandstanding just so that the other side can oppose the, you know, oppose them and come at them just as strong. So, okay, let's do a little example here. Let's say one state, right? DeSantis, Florida. He decides to withhold salary. So what's the left going to do? Who's in complete power, control and power right now, right? They're going to do the same thing, except they're going to affect a lot more people than just the people in Florida, right? Do you see how this works? Now, if all of the Republican states were following suit behind DeSantis, then we'd have ourselves something being done. But just for one guy to pop off and then they put him all over the headlines, all that's going to do is stoke the left and they're going to do it 10 times more and at all of our expenses, right? So that's what I believe is going on with that. So those are the headlines. You guys, hopefully we had fun in the chat. Well, I should be with you in there right now throughout the show. Uh, all right, so... That's that's what YouTube kept marking private. That was just weird. So here you guys are is the chat. We did get to hang out, so that was cool. Um, let me give you some updates on this because there's more going on here with some of these headlines. Some of these headlines are very important, so I want to kind of cover those while I've got you guys on here. So, of course... They are saying that here come the mandates. We said all along, but we were called, um, you know, we were said that it was said that we were pushing conspiracies, right? This is what they said we were doing. Of course, this now has become a reality. The latest flurry of changes arrived over the past week and stretch across many aspects of American life including everything from basic employment obligations to recreational activities like going to the gym or taking a cruise ship. On Monday, a judge ruled that the Norwegian cruise lines can defy a law signed by the governor and require that passengers leaving from the state show written proof of the sticker. So, the mandates are coming. They know it. What else do we have here? A lot of headlines. It looks like Chet Hanks is a flip-flopper first he was telling people to go out and get the sticker and now he's telling people what are you doing don't get the sticker so this is just chaos magic uh, of course these actors change their roles on a moment's notice based on what their controllers tell them to say and do to make us look crazy because people then begin associating us with the actor 
It's like a Pied Piper or a puppet is the way this works to create more division. And of course, Chet Hanks is being depicted as the crazy son of the really good man. And we all have one. And we just have to deal with these people. I guess there is a Robin who now has si switched lanes, let's say. And as the world begins to unravel. So now children that are into Batman and Robin have a new leader for to look forward to in terms of their role models. I just love this world. And now we have sticker wars, right? So Pfizer and Moderna's may be less effective against the variant. But don't worry, because JJ Good Times is more effective against the variant. Just steering the cattle into the herd. I am legend. Now we had covered I am legend. We we're the one of the first ones to expose this. They don't mention us in this article, of course. They don't want to give us any airtime, right? As we sit under 100,000 subscribers for the last six months. But basically, he's responding to this theory that there is some kind of connection between I Am Legend. Now, there, this symbolism in this film went so deep. We, we broke this film down on so many levels that are not mentioned here. All they say is that people think that we're all going to turn into zombies. Yet they admit that there are neurological issues. Neuro neurological issues, right? Which are the first signs that a person is starting to act this way. Now, of course, they will cite the Truth Newbies, which is the cue balls. They cite them because they want people to look at them. And look at their information so that they, it, it's immediately discredited. Florida school board members dare DeSantis to bring it. As they defy his ban on the mask mandates. So I'm sure this is going to go all the way to the Supreme Court. And DeSantis will lose. And it's all by design. Dog and pony show. Boise parents are standing up. My child, my choice. As they protest the decision of the mask mandate. Now these people are probably just going out of their minds. They move to this state for freedom. And they are not having the freedom that they want for the governor they voted for. In the state they wanted to live in. You guys, a lot of people move to states. They spend a lot of money and invest a lot of time and money to get out of places that they're in. To have more freedoms. And now they're finding that it's going to be the same pretty much everywhere. And then stories like this are setting us up for more and more stickers. Then Now they're saying that they're going to be able to fast track more stickers. Because now they can just look at antibody levels. So they can just pop these off anytime they want as these variants, as they bring these variants to market, they bring the stickers to market, and this will never end. And of course, the fall guy always is the right and Jesus. Now, nowhere in this article, as they bag on the sticker hesitant, and they bag on the religious people that believe in Jesus. Nowhere in here do they talk about the Bible and that Jesus is the healer. They don't talk about that in here. They only talk about the more extreme aspects of this. A lot of people were trying to get me to, you know, say, this is it. This is the mark. And I'm like, you guys... The minute you do that, you fall right into their trap. We already know what we're supposed to be doing. You start labeling things that you believe is, as a matter of fact, look, I'm not a prophet. I've told you guys many, many times. And 
most of the time we present things to discuss. I don't know everything, but we provide evidence and we provide trends of things that seem to paint a picture. And then you go back and you pray about it and you open your Bible. And sometimes we steal, sharpen, steal. So you guys come back and go, Casey, maybe this or maybe that. And I go, you know what? You're right. Or maybe I need to change the way I say this a little bit because that came out wrong or something. And so you guys already know what the mark will be. The Bible is very specific and clear. This may be it. It may not be. I believe it is a precursor to something even much more invasive and much more controlling. So that's the, sh the show. Let's restore the chat here. I'm glad everybody made it over. And again, I'm really sorry for those of you that came to the premiere. It got marked private twice without anybody knowing. You guys, thumbs up the video, please. That would definitely help uh, help this video be distributed far and wide, and it really needs to, because we're in a very crazy part of this spamdemic where they're tightening the screws. They're running out of cases. And so what they're doing is they're roasting and amplifying the places where it is it still exists. They're amplifying the resistant states. They're putting all the focus on them. They need to hurry up and fast track this and get it in everybody's arm. They're forcing it on huge swaths of the labor market and military and government. So if you work for the government, it's coming. That's what I anticipate. By the end of the fall, most federal and state governments will be requiring this. And that's a lot of jobs. The private sector will follow. Now, you might be able to pick off a few places in your locality that aren't requiring it that you could work at. But for the vast majority, it is going to be a turkey shoot for these people. And so we need to stay prayed up and figure out what we're going to do next. All right. Uh, no, I'm not in France, Beyond Awake. No, I haven't been there for years. I re-uploaded a video on the other channel when I was in France for those that enjoyed those videos. And I think I put that in the description box and in the comment section and in the title. But... No, have not been in France. And I'm um it's crazy because I got out of there just before all this went down. That's happened to me a couple times actually in my life. Because I try to listen to that still small voice. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys go. I need to delete the premiere over there because I think it's messing some people up. Some people are talking about the emergency alert. Um, so a lot going on, you guys. I love each and every one of you. Have a great day. I'm glad we didn't get kicked off of here. I'm glad we got to connect today. We'll be back on tomorrow with the top things that we told you were going to happen about the spamdemic that actually came true. Really looking forward to that show tomorrow. Hopefully we're not interrupted and kicked off of here because there was a lot that we said was going to happen that has now happened. Have a great day, everybody.